What's happening, guys? Keith here with another edition of the Impact Report. So this week, things may be a little different as I do not have video for this podcast. Having a little problems with my video camera, so I will just be doing audio for this week. So this week, we didn't have any crazy news, but it was a huge week for the draw, a.k.a. Sammy Callahan. Uh, He was on Talk is Jericho, so... This was an interesting interview. He uh, It was super intense. He stayed in character for basically the whole interview. Kind of hard to know what was kayfabe, what was shoot. And, you know, I mean, that's kind of what makes this whole angle so great. Um, he basically goes on and talks about, you know, the backlash he's received from fans and other pro wrestlers. How real life injuries and accidents have been turned into angles in the past, and why this is being so being treated so differently. Um, I had spoke a couple weeks back when I talked about the bat incident, and you know he kind of said the same thing that I said. You know, at the end of the day, it's entertainment, and the show must go on. Uh, he goes on to talk about uh, Ohio is for Killers, OVE. Uh, His time in WWE, being a booker, a promoter, and how he's been running shows, how he was the most booked man at WrestleCon last year. Um, And, you know, he he was able to put to rest a few rumors that were going around. Um, The first being uh, his whole thing with New Japan and the kissing gimmick and how people said that that's the reason why he... or he was told not to do it anymore, which he said was untrue. And then he put to rest one of the bigger rumors we've heard recently in that Impact is having a tough time paying their workers and it's they're getting paid late and things like that. And he said, no, that's not true. I just got a paycheck from them and it was big. So, you know, that him going on about being, you know, the most booked guy and how he's getting paid for all this, so... But like I said, this was really an intense interview, and if you guys haven't checked it out already, I would do so. Um, It's available all over. Uh, We also learned that this week, Taiji Ishimori has confirmed on his Instagram account that he had given his resignation to Pro Wrestling Noah. Uh, He reportedly said if he didn't take a big step now, he'll regret it forever. Uh, Ishimori told Tokyo Sports... Lots of Japanese wrestlers are active internationally right now. I want to be among them. For Taiji Ishimori to appeal on a global scale. He says he is open to offers at home and abroad. So he has worked for Pro Wrestling Noah since 2006. And it's unsure what his future holds as far as Impact Wrestling. Because he was a part of the talent exchange that Impact Wrestling had with Pro Wrestling Noah. Um, I will keep you guys updated with any news as as far as that goes, um, so, this was the one-year anniversary for LAX in Impact Wrestling, uh, WrestleZone sat down with Santana, and, uh, you know, he kind of talked about how he, they became a part of Impact Wrestling, the influence that Conan and Homicide had on them, the treatment of Hispanic wrestlers in the wrestling world, the barbed wire massacre match, and of course his thoughts on the bat incident, amongst other things. You guys can head over to WrestleZone.com to read that full interview. And we also got word from Conan on Twitter that he was released from the hospital after seven days and the hip replacement went great. Uh, He said that he is going to be on antibiotics for nine weeks, and if it is not successful, that he may have to go in for another surgery. So we hope Conan has a speedy recovery. So this past week's impact drew 350,000 viewers and ranked 119 on Cable's Top 150. Uh, If you guys haven't checked out my review already, it is on the page. I want to give a shout-out to everybody that has... Come to the page and watched it as the numbers were very high. Um, Thanks to all the people that have subscribed to the page. It's great. Um, And once we hit that 200 subscriber mark, I will be doing a giveaway of a suicide autographed picture. So once that happens, I will upload a video of that. So 
Yeah, uh, not much else. This is pretty much it. We had uh, Sammy Callahan on the Impact Wrestling teleconference. So they did something a little different this week as they streamed it on Facebook and was take- were taking questions from people on Facebook, which was great because, you know, they might as well capitalize on this as Impact has been got- been getting a whole lot of buzz around the whole Sammy Callahan incident. Um, so I watched this, or I should say listened to this teleconference maybe two days ago, and as I was looking for it on the Facebook page, I was just kind of scrolling to see what was going on, and I, I just don't understand why people must invade Impact Wrestling's page on here, Twitter, wherever. I know they were trying to do it on Twitch, but just constantly bashing the product. I mean, this past week, uh, Taya had taken to Twitter to talk about all the body shaming and hateful things that people were saying about her in this past week's Impact, and they were doing the same thing on the Facebook page. I, I don't understand why people go out of their way to do this. I mean, if you don't like the product, just don't don't pay attention to it. I mean, I'm a person that likes all things professional professional wrestling. I review WWE, as you guys know, Impact Wrestling. I watch New Japan, Ring of Honor. I'm going to House of Hardcore next week. I mean, I I just love pro wrestling, so I, I don't understand the hate for it. But anyway, so before Sammy Callahan goes on the teleconference, uh, Josh Matthews talks about the next match for WrestleCon, which will be Eddie Edwards versus Sammy Callahan in an I Quit match. And as soon as Sammy came on, he was irate about this, that he had to hear about his match at WrestleCon on a teleconference. He couldn't even get the a text or a call about it. So he was heated. And again, much like Jericho's podcast, he kept character throughout the whole thing, which makes it that much better. Um, he, he said that... Uh, He basically talked about Ohio being a hot spot for wrestling, that he's a versatile wrestler and he's able to do death matches here and then wrestle in Japan for strong style. He basically said that uh, there is a reason why he's called the worldwide desperado. He talks about bringing more members of Ohio's for Killers into Impact Wrestling. The two names that he brought up was uh, his girlfriend Jessica Havoc and Zachary Wentz. Now, I think bringing Jessica in would be a good idea, but I really think Impact should go after Zachary Wentz and even his girlfriend, Kimberly, who was recently released by WWE. Uh, She was very underutilized in the company, and I feel like she could bring a good amount to the knockouts division. But Zachary, I mean, you can team him with, uh, with Desmond Xavier as they team all over the place. Uh, Definitely a great addition to the tag team division and both of them can be utilized in the X division. I I could see them putting on fantastic matches with either the cult of Lee LAX, even if they decide to go the OVE route, it it could definitely make things interesting. Uh, He also talks about bringing more impact wrestling talent into Lucha underground. Uh, He talks about the difference between the Sammy Callahan and Jeremiah crane character and he hopes to see the ri- a rise in intergender wrestling. But uh, he basically finishes the teleconference by saying that his goal by the end of the year is take control of Impact Wrestling. And then he reiterates that the OVE is there to take over everything. Uh, basically, anything that I didn't mention here was talked about uh, on the Jericho interview as well. Both definitely interviews to check out. Just just because it adds that realism to pro wrestling, it, it's definitely something that we haven't gotten in a long time. So after the teleconference happened, I, I believe uh, Sammy had posted a video to Twitter or wherever he posted it, but we learned that it will not be Sammy Callahan showing up at WrestleCon, but Jeremiah Crane. So this was definitely the right move, and it makes the most sense, as this will be Jer advertises Jeremiah Crane versus Eddie Edwards, and then I'm sure we will get that payoff match between Sammy Callahan and Eddie Edwards in Impact Wrestling. Um, 
I don't know what else they're going to do, considering this is going to be an I Quit match, but I'm definitely looking forward to it. And great news for the Impact vs. Lucha Underground event, as it is the second in gross reserve ticket sales behind the sold-out WrestleCon Super Show. I wouldn't be surprised if the Impact show does sell out after the entire card is posted. I know a lot of people are questioning why they didn't post the entire card already, as it probably would have been sold out. But... That is all I have for you guys today. I will see you next week for my Impact review and again for the Impact report and hopefully with the Suicide Autograph giveaway as we are at 192 subscribers now. And I just want to thank you guys for taking your time out of your day to listen to this. And until next time, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. Thanks, guys. Bye.